My name is Terry Haggerty and I'm an artist in Northern California that specializes in a medium that uses only wire and resin. I'm going to take you through the four steps of my method where we'll create a freestyle geometric wire design, fill the wire shapes with tinted resin, sand it level, then apply a clear top coat of resin. I am very excited to demonstrate my techniques of cold cloisonne using epoxy from Art Resin. Traditional cloisonne is done on enamels and a metal base, but you need to bake these. When I use resin, I can put it on just about any kind of a surface. These are the two pieces I'll be using throughout the demonstration. This piece is my typical style. I love the flowers, I love lots of shading, and I always will build a border into the piece. But I also love geometrics. That's what we're going to focus on. When you're designing something like this, give yourself a lot of variety of line sizes and shapes and some big open areas for some resin play. Whatever you create, it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be well worth the time you spent on it. You can use just about any kind of material to apply your resin and your wires to, as long as it's very flat. Our last process we do in this is we sand everything down. So if there was any kind of undulations, it's going to show up in the sanding process. So what I've done here, I use a wooden panel. I use it for all of my test pieces, as you see. And I like to apply a piece of colored non-porous paper to it. If I use a colored resin on top of this, or even a clear resin on top, this color is going to come through and give it a lot more dimension. You need to add a wire around the perimeter so things don't bleed off the edge. The favorite material of mine is called FRP board. You can get this at Home Depot or easily found online. I like the 1 8 inch thick. Uh, the good thing about this material is if I've got some unwanted resin or wires, I can scrape them off easily off of this and not mar the surface. Whereas with the board that has got the paper on it, it's probably going to pull off this paper. You can use other materials like metal. Looks great, looks cool, get lots of dimension, or glass. Go for it. So as you can see, I've already started my wiring. How I like to work on these big projects is I'll draw it in my computer first. That way I can print it out, I can move things around, I can see which, like in this case, which flower I like the best, what size. It also gives you an idea in real life how difficult these tight little turns are going to be with your wire. You can't do anything you want. You've got to be able to work with the thickness of this wire and its bendability. As you can see there. there. You can use aluminum wire. Here you go. The bad thing about aluminum wire, even though you think it's going to be soft, it, it is a much more difficult bend than your annealed copper wire. Annealed wire means I've heated it up and it's softened it. I'll buy my wire and it says it's soft. It's not soft, folks. Look at that's not soft. Anyway, by heating it, it makes it much more pliable but you still are limited. After I've come up with my design, I will print it out on parchment paper. And this is the stuff that you use for baking. Um, you, you have to flip your design because when you go to burn it down, it's on the wrong side, so you flip it over. And you'll see, it makes a real nice, clean line much better than if you were using carbon paper. You can see, it's pretty good. There you go. So once I am starting to wire, I will always start with the most forefront 
item. In other words, this guy is on top of just about everything. It's much easier to butt up to something than to try to um, do this up against that. In other words, do this one first, and it's much easier to add and build up. The other thing to know is that you don't need a lot of tools. Standard wire cutters. You do need some nice little needle nose pliers. And you need a good pair of flush cutters. Flush meaning it's going to cut your wire perpendicular to the length of the wire. You don't want to have any little excess point on your wire if you're going to be butting up against something. As you can sort of see, I've cut my wires that butt up at angles so that it is giving as tight a fit as possible. If you don't have a tight fit, when you put your resin down, it is going to bleed out and you're going to have to go back and clean that out. And it might have gotten rid of all of your nice color that you spent so much time putting there. I use cyanacrylate and this is very watery. The watery, the more watery, the better, because then when you apply it, it will seep underneath the whole length of the wire. Uh, some of the other nice tools are to have a pair of bent needle nose. And then just for fun, it's great to have some other little helpers here, some other little shapes. It's good to have a couple of pairs of X-Acto knives because you're going to be doing a lot of cleaning, scraping, and you can use them also as an extension to your fingers so you don't get glue on them. Another idea is using some tools from other types of crafts to help you push those wires flush to the board. Of course, pencil to mark where to cut your wire as you will see in the demo. The last thing, I like to have some canned air because I'm going to be blowing away some of this stuff that I've scraped away, like the excess glue. And I, being old, need to use these guys because I can't see that. Okay, on with it. I've annealed and straightened some wires and drawn a few guidelines on my board. I use a pencil to mark where I want to cut the wire, cut it with my flush cutters, and then apply the tiniest drop of glue and guide it under the length of the wire. Um, a tip to create a sharp corner, make the first wire a little longer than necessary and glue it down. Then butt the second wire up to the first, glue that, and then trim off the excess bit to form a nice sharp corner. Sometimes it's fun to just freestyle your shapes. Here I've used a metal dowel to create some nice smooth curves in the wire. I've finished wiring and now I'm going to go through my old stockpile of resin drips and pull out some nice little clear drips and glue them on the board. When I add the background resin, these little clear drips will show the gold paper below. It just makes it more interesting. I've also glued some tiny bits of leftover wire on too. So these two are ready for resin. I want to talk to you about the difference between fiberglass versus a board that's got a piece of paper mounted on it. When I go to take off any of these wires, if I didn't like something, I'm going to be ripping off, as you can see it right in there, the paper. Whereas when you're doing something that you want precision, I'll use my fiberglass because I can go back in and I can rip a wire off, scrape off the glue and it'll be nice and clean because I ripped off a lot of these wires 
and was able to clean it up and almost start from new. This one was a fun. Use these syringes, 10 milliliters, makes it easy to measure my resin. Don't allow for bubbles there. Alright. So I'm gonna mix about five colors for my background. Two different whites and a little bit of gray and a little bit of gold and then a little bit of clear, which always adds depth. I use sticks that I've cut the ends off so that I can get into the corners. And I mix all my colors first before I add my hardener. I also write down how much resin I put in of part A because I'll forget because I'll do smaller, different amounts for each color. So, and I write everything down because you guys, I forget everything. All right, so we'll just mix the first color. So I'm going to do this whole piece pretty much in metallic colors. I've never done anything like that before. I've got a piece of plastic to cover it so I can at least show you what's going on here. All right. So on my bigger pieces, you'll see I, um, I use powdered pigments because then I can get more finite measuring on my colors because I'll be adding just little bits of maybe a little bit of red to, and then a little bit of green to get a, um, a dull red. But I need so little pigment, dry pigment, but I can get more precision. All right. Okay, all my hardeners added. As you see, I label everything. I'll see you after mixing. Okay, everything is mixed. And now I am just going to start laying in stuff, not knowing what I'm doing. So these tools were made for me by a friend named Bob Mackey, and you can check out his wonderful art because he does a similar process to this. I'm just putting down my fully mixed resin randomly into the background, working all five colors at once. I'll always allow resin to cure for a few hours before adding any resin to any connecting areas because I don't want there to be any kind of mixing where I don't want it to mix. When I'm working on a piece that's either wood or has the paper, I'll clean up my resin drips when it's still wet. But if I'm working on fiberglass, I can clean it up the next day when it's cured. So um, I'm going to put down some gold in this area. I'm also going to add a little bit of clear resin to it after I've applied the gold so that some of this background will come through. What I did on this color, I used a metallic color called truffle. 
and the second color I added a, a little bit of red and some burnt sienna to it and just kind of mix it in and use the toothpick on it just to give it a little bit more interest than a flat color. So I'll come back. If you don't fill it all the way up to the height of the wire, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be sanding it down and you're going to be adding a coat of clear on top that's going to fill any voids you have. Finished sanding this piece, I use a random orbital sander with an 80 grit sandpaper. And it, it really roughs everything up, but once I put my clear coat on top, everything is going to be just smooth and even and beautiful. When you're sanding, you have to be so careful and watch your wires because they are softer than your resin. And you can really sand right through everything if you're not really on top of watching things. There's some spots where I didn't sand all the way through. And I'm just going to go back with a knife and kind of scrape some of that away. And you won't even notice that it's funky once it's got the clear coat. I also wear gloves once every, my wire is exposed because your hands can leave oils on your wires. And after your clear coat is on, that those dark stains from your hands will eventually come to the surface. So, gloves. It's time for the top coat. I've gone ahead and leveled it and wiped this down with a microfiber cloth. And I've cleaned the inside of the lid that's going to be protecting it. I don't want any dust to be falling on it. I've used the handy art resin calculator to determine how much I need and I'll start mixing my resin. These cups are from the giant size laundry detergent and I love them for being a medium-sized mixing cup.